Hi, I'm Ryan Hampton here with ICS, and with the imminent release of version 1.4 of Greenhouse, I wanted to share with you our product. Greenhouse is a rapid application development framework that speeds up development and reduces project risk. In this short intro video, I'm going to talk about the Greenhouse process and show our medical demo. Along the way, I'm going to key in on a few specific aspects that make our product unique. Application separation and simulation. Here's a high-level view of the Greenhouse process. It goes beyond just generating a UI and actually gives us a full architecture and buildable application. Over the years, we've rolled our very best architectural principles into the generated runtime. Here's the typical workflow. We have a three-phase design approach. We start with the Figma for UI design. This is where things like the screen layout, colors, themes, fonts, and other assets are defined. We like Figma because it's well understood by most designers and you can use the prototyping feature to get UX input. Next, we import these designs into Greenhouse Architect. In Greenhouse Architect, we create objects that will hold data to be exchanged between the backend and the UI. We bind these UI elements to these properties that will be exchanged with real data or from a simulated backend. And then in step 2.5 is where we create plugins that uh, you know, act as your actual backend bridge that connect with the generated code and get the live data or otherwise mock this data to, to update the UI values. And then finally, you get your desired application. So now onto the medical demo. So this is running on a Tordex board on my desk connected to my development PC. And it's an application that shows things like SpO2% and heart rate uh, and all this. And it can be connected with the real heart rate monitor to read these values. But right now they're just being simulated. There's history, patient data, Today we're going to be talking about a specific test case. So uh, since I want to talk about unit testing and simulation, let's just find a bug here. See how if I decrement the volume, it actually is allowed to go negative, which, de which doesn't make sense, especially if it was connected to a real phone. So let's figure out how we can identify that through unit testing and then use the simulator to fix it. Okay, so I've just imported our Figma designs into Greenhouse Architect, and you can see in the center canvas area that the screens have actually been uh, reconstructed from um, what the Figma design indicated. So looking at the uh, call screen, let's take a look at the bottom bar panel. Uh, and this is just design mode of Greenhouse Architect where you can bind values to and from UI elements. So these things are now QML. Um, so let's take a look at this spin box. You can see that the value here is actually bound to a, a backend object named call data. It's call volume property, which is an integer. So this is the value that's actually shown on the UI. So let's go to our backend where we collect all these QT objects and we uh, have methods, properties, and events associated with each object. So let's look at call data. Call data has a call volume property that's an integer. Let's change that to five. Methods, there's an increment and a decrement method. And we'll see how these play out here when we go back to design mode. So you can see that the bound value did in fact update from seven to five. Um, and this is going to be important when we're looking at uh, drive, using the simulator to drive this value change to test the limits of our UI and then ultimately fixing that bug that I talked about earlier. Uh, so looking at the spin box, you can see these actions now. Um, there's a uh, decrease button clicked and an increase button clicked that when these actions are invoked, actually call the methods decrement and increment respectively on the call data object. So shown up here on the screen now is our data simulator that's generated alongside every application. So this doesn't need to be built custom. Uh, you can see it has the backend objects that I showed you there in Greenhouse Architect and their available methods, events, and properties that you can interact with to drive the application. So uh, this is sometimes useful when you are developing an application, but uh, the hardware isn't actually ready for um, for running on the board. So in our case, I've actually connected this data simulator over a WebSocket communication at port 26186. So the board, the Tordex board that's running the application will actually get these changes that I'm uh, doing here. So I can use the simulator to drive this value to, let's say I drive it to 10. And then um, just one other thing, let me go over to uh, patient data and change the condition, which is on the top bar from good to bad, 
um, so we can see these changes on the board. And now here on the Toradex board, you can see that those changes did actually happen. Uh, let me decrement on the data simulator, the call volume. And, oh, look, it was allowed to go negative. So let's take a look at unit testing next. Okay, so I've pulled up some of the unit tests that are generated alongside the application. Over here in the project tree, you can see that um, each each of the backend objects that I showed, for example, we've been looking at call data, have the uh, unit test is generated for the interface and the implementation. So for the implementation, uh, I as the unit test writer want to be uh, want to test that decrement, right? So I want to set the call volume to zero and then decrement it to assert that it's still equal to zero in that the, the developer who made the application didn't miss that and allow it to go below zero. Um, and then I do another check to make sure that it does go from five to four. So let's run these unit tests and see if they pass. He collapsed them. So this actually tests the entire runtime to provide test coverage for your application. So let's see what failed. It looks like this assert failed. So it did, in fact, as we suspected, allow us to go negative. So let's look at the, now let's go back to the developer lens and look at our increment and decrement methods that we overrode in our implementation of the call data object in our backend plugin. And you can see we did our increment right. It won't let us go above 10 because that's what we're enforcing the user to be allowed to change the volume to. That's the maximum volume in the system. But here we just arbitrarily decrement it. So really what we need to do is give it a Q max of zero and that decrement and see now if we run our suite of unit tests Again, let me pull that up here. Sure enough, they all pass. Okay, so I have up on the screen the simulator again. And what I'm trying to show here is that instead of having to recompile every time uh, after I, you know, for example, I fixed that C++ code in our backend plugin that um, enforced the correct logic for the decrement, for the call volume, uh, here I'm actually just going to drive it directly from JavaScript in our simulator. So I actually just filled in, populated the body of these JavaScript methods so when the decrement gets called, uh, this code will be executed, which is JavaScript. So I grab the actual property call volume and I make sure that while it's above zero, I decrement it by one. And the similar logic applies for increment. So now using this logic, I don't actually need to recompile and target the board. I can mess around with the app logic for all the areas of my application to test out uh, how the application behaves to changing data values. So now the moment of truth. Let's see if that JavaScript code was correct and I actually got the application logic right. And yep, I can't decrement below zero, so it's proper and the app is fixed. So Greenhouse imports entire UX designs from tools like Qt Design Studio and Figma. It produces this full layered architecture that provides the necessary separation of concerns for easy code injection and testability. Along with every application, we generate uh, a data simulator that we use for black box testing every UI before the backend driver code is even ready. So you may not have the hardware, you may not have the necessary C++ libraries available quite yet, but you can test your UI using the simulator and that JavaScript that I showed. So this generates a functional prototype that evolves into a shipped product faster than ever. So ultimately what you get here is a pixel perfect uh, representation of your UX design that was made in Figma and you can pull in different components from things like Qt Design Studio for QML. Uh, and ultimately we found that this saves about half the time for project development and it brings it down to a fourth of the risk. So this was just a short introduction to Greenhouse. We do have much more in-depth content available. To see how Greenhouse can work for you, contact ICS.